The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. The challenge to compromise and sacrifice is foundational to the Christian tradition. It is the reason why Christians have a strong history of helping the poor, the sick, and the marginalized. It is the reason the song, They'll Know We Are Christians by Our Love, is supposed to ring true. It is also true that we can get distracted in ways that serve primarily ourselves and those like us. Again and again, we are called to repentance. Again and again, we are challenged to let go of human things that serve as something blocks. Again and again, we are invited to look with the eyes of the one whose love was so deep that he literally embraced a cross. In our desire to choose a life that honors the Savior and Redeemer of the world, let us pray. We thank you, O God, that you have again brought us together on the Lord's Day to praise you for your goodness and to ask your blessing. Give us grace to see your hand in the week that is past and your purpose in the week to come. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the letter to the Romans. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. There was a time when if I had asked what faith looks like, I suspect I would have heard many descriptions of what happens Sunday mornings as we gather in beautiful spaces that hold deep meaning for individuals. Folks might have talked about the history and feelings associated with these buildings. They might have talked about the community, the family which would gather together. They might have talked about voices united in prayer and in song led by our talented music directors. They may have talked about the breaking of bread 
and sharing of fellowship, and or the passing of peace in generous and loving ways to everyone gathered. They may have mentioned coffee and tea and treats, conversation, smiles, and giving thanks. All of these and more are reflective of our experiences as people of faith gathered for worship within a church. All of these, in one way or another, have been stripped away, denied us over the last six months in an effort to keep people we love safe in the midst of a pandemic. Thus, we are left with a simple question. What have we learned about the nature of faith? Well, the basics we so often associate with faith have not been easily accessible to us. What have we learned about the nature of faith in this time? It's an important question, particularly as we consider the possibility of returning to in-person worship within our buildings. In what ways has our faith developed and grown over this time so that that return might invite us into a deeper participation in the living out of our faith? What have we learned about the nature of faith in this time. Notice in the letter to the Romans, the passage referenced today highlights the marks of a good Christian. None of the qualities listed match that which may have been used to describe faith at one point in time. This is not to say that these qualities are meaningless. All of these aspects are valuable in regards to nourishing our faith. Instead, what we read and hear are ways in which people of faith are to take the nourishment of our practices and bring these into our everyday lives. Faith is not solely what happens in a building with people we like every Sunday. Perhaps more than ever before, our experiences in the last six months have helped us reflect and act on this truth. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. In a myriad of ways, this pandemic has challenged us to put our faith, our love, into action. Closing our buildings and moving to alternative ways to nourish faith is a sign of genuine love which protects the vulnerable among us. Likewise, practicing social distancing, wearing masks, and limiting our contacts reinforces the desire to keep as many as possible safe. We have made many compromises in the name of love and mutual affection. These efforts have mattered to this point, helping to keep the impact of this pandemic at least manageable. Imagine what might happen if we could continually engage in the same kind of intentional ways as we seek to address other issues. How might we compromise practices and traditions in order to offer support for the essential workers of the pandemic whose wages are far less than what is necessary for basic needs? Masks might be donned to help stifle power and privilege in ways that can transform our relationships to those who are Black, Indigenous, and people of color. Can the respect 
shown through social distancing be mimicked in our connections to those with marginalized orientations and genders? In what ways can we use technology to learn more about those who are different from us and deepen our appreciation for the truths of diversity? This time has challenged us to engage in practices of faith that are new. As we have done so, hopefully we have created spaces in which our faith can be transformed so that we can better embody the marks of a good Christian highlighted in the Roman passage today. In a desire to continue to learn and grow in this journey, let us pray as we sing together, not for tongues of heaven's angels. profess our faith. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let us pray. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need, responding, hear our prayer, following, Lord, in your mercy. God of faithfulness, you bid your people to follow Jesus. Set the mind of your church on divine things. Grant us trust in you that we lost our lives for the sake of Christ and thereby discover joy in life through him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of wonder, the earth is yours and all that is in it. Heal your creation and give us eyes to see the world as you do. As the seasons change, pattern the rhythm of our lives in harmony with all creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all nations, you call us to live peacefully with you. Give us ears to hear one another, even those we may name as enemies. 
Fill all leaders with mercy and understanding that they advocate and genuinely care for those who are poor and most vulnerable in their communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of salvation, you promise to deliver us. Give those who suffer a strong sense of your presence and love. Accompany those who are uncertain, raise the spirits of those who are despairing, and heal the sick, especially those that we carry in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of community, you call us to rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, and persevere in prayer. Make our congregation a workshop of your love. When we quarrel, bring reconciliation. Help us overcome evil with good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all grace, you give us everlasting life. In love, we recall your holy ones who now live in your undying light, especially those that we carry in our hearts. In our remembering, give us a foretaste of the feast to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gathering our prayers into one, let us pray as our Savior has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen author and giver of good things. Graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion. Nourish us in all goodness. And of your great mercy, keep us in the same through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and the blessing of God, Creator, Redeemer, and Life-Giving Spirit remain with you and all those you love, now and always. Amen. Go and live in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. And may you have a wonderful week.